Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo, aka Professor Mohan. Today, what we're going to do is talk about hypercortisolism. Specifically, it's called Cushing syndrome. We're going to talk about a different variety of causes that causes Cushing syndrome. Now, of course, if you missed any of the previous lectures, you guys are in luck today because all the links are going to be listed right at the bottom. So just click on the links below and it'll take you to the previous videos. So in case you missed last week's video specifically, we talked about the cortisol, we talked about the regulation and the secretion. We want to remind you guys before we get into today's lecture that the hypothalamus secretes CRH. CRH works on the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland will release ACTH. That'll work on the adrenal gland, which will release, of course, cortisol. Cortisol then through negative feedback will inhibit both the hypothalamus as well as the ACTH, decreasing its own production. We also talked about the many different functions of cortisol and now what's going to happen is you want to imagine when there's way too much cortisol in the body, how is that going to affect the body? So anybody with Cushing syndrome, whatever the cause is, they're going to present the very similar with the same sort of a signs and symptoms. An increase in cortisol is going to cause high blood pressure. An increase in cortisol is going to cause hyperglycemia. Why is that? Because cortisol in general causes gluconeogenesis. It also causes insulin resistance. So that's why we get the hyperglycemia. Cortisol, of course, also breaks down fat. So lipolysis breaks down muscle mass, proteolysis. So that's why all of this will make sense over here. The buffalo hump, the abdominal obesity, lots of weight gain, and moon facies. Moon facies, you're going to see, you want to compare it with the patients with Parkinson's disease as well as depression. So moon facies is a very similar feature seen in the two above mentioned conditions. Okay, the next thing is osteoporosis. Why? Because too much cortisol is going to decrease bone formation. You also got this decreasing immune response. So of course the patients are going to get uh, you know, more sick, uh, more prone to illnesses and diseases. And thinning of the skin, how is that? It decreases fibroblastic activity, causing stria around the patient's abdomen. And of course, remember this one over here, if it's a female patient, then it causes amenorrhea. Now on this side of the board, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the causes of too much cortisol. Before we get into that, what's the first thing you're going to do if you suspect too much cortisol? You're going to do a screening test, a 24 hour urine analysis to measure the free cortisol. Now that's obviously going to be elevated. The next thing you do is you measure the ACTH levels. Now the ACTH levels are going to indicate uh, where are we focusing on. The levels will either be elevated or suppressed. So let's start on this side of the board first. If they're elevated, we're thinking, okay, the cause can either be Cushing's disease or the cause can be ectopic production. Now, how are you going to tell the difference? Now, first of all, what is Cushing's disease? Cushing's disease is an ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma. That means the problem is happening up in the anterior pituitary gland, which means too much ACTH is being released. It works on the adrenal glands and that produces too much cortisol. Now, you give this patient a dexamethasone suppression test. What is dexamethasone now, you ask? Dexamethasone is an analog of cortisol. So, you give the patient cortisol. Now, if you remember over here, if you give the patient cortisol, it's meant to inhibit the production release from the anterior pituitary gland. So in this patient over here, you give a low dose dexamethasone suppression test, nothing happens. ACTH is still released. So now you go to the high level. The high dose of dexamethasone is eight milligrams. It will suppress the ACTH levels. So you give the patient dexamethasone, it'll go up in the brain, suppress the ACTH levels released from the anterior pituitary gland. Now, when you compare that to ectopic production of ACTH, ectopic production, of course, we know the word ectopic means the substance is being produced in a place where it normally doesn't be produced, basically. One of the causes is small cell lung cancer. Now in this patient, you give high dose dexamethasone and it will not suppress that production. So ACTH will still remain high. That's how you tell the difference. With Cushing disease, a high dose dexamethasone suppression test will suppress the ACTH levels. However, in a topic production of ACTH, it will not suppress it. So keep that in mind. The next thing, the next category we have over here is, well, what happens if ACTH levels are suppressed? Well, think about it. If ACTH levels are suppressed, that means the problem is not up in the pituitary gland. That means the problem is not in a topic cause of ACTH, for example, small cell lung cancer. The problem may be somewhere in the adrenal glands. So it could be adrenal tumor, which is producing way too much cortisol. And when too much cortisol is produced, it's going to go back to anterior pituitary gland and inhibit the production of ACTH. That's why ACTH levels are suppressed. What do you do next? Of course, you do an MRI to confirm. So you can schedule the patient for surgery if you have to remove the tumor. Another cause you also want to remember, the last cause, exogenous steroid use. So what is that? Patients are taking steroids, maybe steroids, uh, because they're trying to bulk up for the season. Maybe they're taking steroids because they prescribe steroids for a, a, one of the diseases that they have. Whatever the cause is, steroid use, long-term steroid use, what's that gonna do? Of course, steroids act like cortisol. So cortisol, the exogenous cortisol is gonna go back to the pituitary gland, inhibit the levels of ACTH. 
So of course, if the patient's trying to take steroids to bulk up for the season, you tell the patient, hey, stop the steroid use. If there's another cause, then of course you gotta investigate, see what's going on with the patient, see if they really need the steroids, because you do not want to have too much cortisol, otherwise it's gonna cause all these things over here on the right side. So that's it guys, it was a very quick lecture, but it's a very, very important lecture. Again, review all the causes, review why ACTH will be elevated, and review why ACTH will be suppressed. Definitely know the differences. I wanna thank you guys for joining me again this week. You know, until next week, I want you guys to give the video a thumbs up, definitely share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and definitely comment on the sections below. Next week, what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about the opposite. Well, what happens when there's too little cortisol, and we refer to that as Addison's disease. So until next week, have a great week, and we will see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.